Hi there, Steve Arterburn here for New Life Live and I want to give you some encouragement uh, and there's uh, no preparation for April Fools around here, but I have to tell you what happened. Uh, somebody printed up that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were moving uh, just a block away from here. And uh, because uh, this neighborhood I live in, it kind of looks like a uh, British village and uh, we have all these roundabouts and so it made the case that they felt really comfortable here they could be secure and get a feel for you know middle america and um well of course it was a um it was an april fool's joke that they didn't tell you till the, till the next page but everybody that read it was so excited that royalty was coming to live well you know probably know where i'm going with this you know why don't we get so excited that God lives with us, He lives in us, and He is for us all the time. Even in the midst of a terrible epidemic that, you know, it's going to get worse, it's going to feel worse, but one day it's actually going to get better. Now, um, today I want to talk to you about uh, being creative. It's number six in these ten ways to overcome our fear and our anxieties. But one of the things that I, I, I love about creativity, it's what God does every single day. He creates. He gives life. And I think it's so amazing that, uh, well, let's just say two people are not married. And they're having sex outside of marriage. And it's, it's all wrong. But she gets pregnant. Hey, um... One of the amazing things about God, these two people doing the wrong things create a life, and the instant that God gives that baby life, uh, it was meant to be forever. It's weird, isn't it? Um, God can take the, the thing that we do and the thing that is punishment even uh, for doing it and turn it into something amazing. You know, uh, our, our church at Northview, we have uh, 13 campuses. Three of them are in prison. And one of the guys at the prison uh, decided, uh, after he became a Christian one night, he decided to walk down the police station and turn himself in. Because he had been, um, essentially, he was, I think, 26. He was having sex with or raping a 12-year-old girl. And accepted Jesus, felt the responsibility to pay the price, turns himself in, ends up in one of our prison campuses. And there he, be, he decided he was going to commit his life, not just to believe in Jesus, but to commit his life, and he'd make restitution. And his restitution was taking the book, Every Man's Battle, and translating it into a Braille, sending it to the Library of Congress. It is the Braille translation at the Library of Congress. Took the worst thing ever and made something good out of it. That's what God does with us. And through this, this crisis, He wants to take the worst of times and help us to create the best of times or great things from it. And one of the ways to do that is to be creative. Because if we can get involved in the creative process, then we can kind of get out of ourselves and our misery and in to something else. Uh, last night I went home and uh, Carter came to the dining table with three pages of poetry that he had written just yesterday. Not just poetry, but beautiful, wonderful uh, lines. It just it blew me away. And I, I had just gone through an old folder and I found some uh, poetry I had written at his age. And I just wanted to prove to him how profound his, his writing was because mine was just so stupid and so plain and now that we, anyway. So be creative, uh, it, write something you've never written before. Found an old letter from my father. Uh, what a great thing that is. Write, write to somebody, create something. Pull out all the things around the house and, and try to create something, a collage. Get some paint, paint a tree, do something that you've never done before. Um, you know, drawing looks so impossible, but it's not impossible, it's easy. 
uh, to do. You can copy things. You can create things. Another thing to create is laughter. Pull out a, a joke book and, and uh, eliminate about 20 of them. And then you might find one that's funny and share it. Or watch like a, a, a comedian, a clean comedian like Brian Regan is one of our favorites. And it's, it's just become part of our family. Watch a, 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 a funny movie and create some laughter. We like to do a thing where you tell a story. One person starts with one line and the next person creates the next line of the story. And it's a lot of fun. But we can, we can involve other people. Uh, if you are alone, you get a Zoom or a chat or um, Skype meeting and you do these kinds of things. You create the moments that produce laughter, joy, connection that help you and others get out of the misery uh, that somebody might be going through. You're making, you're making the best of the worst of times. And, you know, music uh, is one of the greatest things to create. And uh, you, you can start with whistling. You can create a little and record it. And, and record something over the whistle or humming. Or uh, maybe it's spoons or something like that. Uh, drums. But you can create rhythm. You can create a dance together. You can create a family dance and you don't have to be with other people. You can do all of this online, everybody in their own little Zoom box. But, but the goal is creating something uh, that's not there. What a great thing that is. You just wake up in the morning and say, okay, I need to create something. What is it I can do? And speaking of that, this great verse, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit or loyal spirit within me. So one of the things that we can ask God to help us with is to create a clean heart. I love that because all of us have things in our heart, resentment, bitterness, anger, uh, lust, uh, maybe greed, jealousy, all these things. We ask God, God help me to rid myself of those things that don't honor you, they don't honor uh, my identity, and they don't uh, bring joy to my life. So creating a clean heart, we can all do that. How do you do it? I think you have to confess what's there. Uh, you have to open up to somebody about it. You have to confess to God, ask God to forgive you for it. He says he will if you'll ask for it. Uh, and when you do, you end up in this different state where you're not wanting to latch on to all the crummy stuff in the world. You're wanting to preserve and protect what's pure and what's clean. So my tip for getting over fear and uh, anxiety is to stop and, and just create something and don't obsess over everything that might happen, but create something good. Now, uh, as you know, I've offered this before. If you would like a copy of the Restoration Bible, this big old thick paperback, I'll send it to you for free. And all you have to do is go to Steve Social at newlife.com and I'll send this Bible to you if you'll give me your address. Steve Social at newlife.com and it's, this Restoration Bible is so powerful because uh, in this Bible you've got uh, devotionals, you've got study helps and it's all based on the acronym RESTORE. But I want to share with you um, from the E of RESTORE, the uh, last E, an exercise of faith. It's one of the devotionals here in Matthew and uh, it's uh, entitled Making an Eternal Difference. And it's talking about being on mission. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 reads like this. Jesus came near and said to him, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. Before returning to heaven, Jesus gathered the disciples that he had spent three years training and commanding them to turn around and repeat the process. The famous 
Great Commission. It's the work of the church in the world today. It's the works Jesus calls Christians to engage in. What does being a disciple who makes disciples actually mean? It means living out Jesus' teachings and helping others to do likewise. Discipleship isn't a program. It's a lifestyle. It's not a six-week class. It's a lifelong endeavor. We take the things God has given us, eternal truths, gifts, abilities, hard-earned wisdom, resources, and we pass them on to others. Who's pouring into you? Into whose lives are you making a gospel investment? We are never more blessed, never more like Jesus, when we give our lives away. What an amazing part of creativity when we take what we've been given and what we know and we decide to share that or give that to someone else and help them to create a life of devotion to Jesus, no matter what. Now, I want to close uh, with telling you a story uh, that I just heard the other day uh, from a man who was riding a horse and he was uh, with a bunch of other folks there and this horse just took off toward the stable as sometimes they'll do and he um, he threw him off into a metal wall or gate and crashed in his skull instantly he was blinded uh, his left eye his left eye was uh, blinded and he lay on the ground writhing in pain screaming in pain and everyone around him watched him as he immediately uh, became quiet and calm. He was just covered in blood. He would eventually spend two years in the hospital, over 20 operations uh, to fix almost every broken bone in his body. It was such a severe uh, accident. When he calmed down, the people around him said they thought that he either was dead or was going to die. And it would take life flight helicopter another um, uh, hour to get there to get him to a hospital. And they thought he would be dead. But he said to me that he settled down because he felt the presence of God. He felt the presence of God so strong it was like a color, a purple. And he said it was all love saturating him and listen to this he said it was so powerful it overcame anything that I had ever done any fear I had in the present uh, and any pain he said my pain stopped I was at perfect peace feeling God's supernatural love the Bible says God is love so if you're in the presence of God it makes sense you would feel love he said God told him he would be healed not to worry that God was going to use him greatly. He also said, he quoted this scripture, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he felt like that was in reference to his eye was not going to be healed. And it isn't. But this man, after two years in the hospital, brain damage, I mean, uh, he's just one of the most wonderful human beings on the face of the earth. But I wanted to share that with you to let you know that God was, is, and is going to be loved. And he loves you like crazy. And you may be sick from this virus, know somebody that is, you may be afraid of what's gonna happen, you may have lost your job or uh, financial security. I want you to know through it all, God is love and he loves you. And I'm just gonna invite you to turn to him. All you have to do is say, God, I, I'm, I wanna surrender to you. When you surrender to God, it's the Holy Spirit and his son. To be able to say in this time, I want a new life. I want to accept Christ's sacrifice on the cross for my sins. I want that. It's all you have to do. If you do, I'll help you if you let me know about that decision. It's Steve Social at newlife.com. And also, don't forget, you could ask for a free brand new Bible, Restoration Bible, Steve Social at newlife.com. I'm going to be right here tomorrow, same time. Hope you'll join me. God bless you. Have a great, great evening.